Daegu, South Korea, February 18th, 2003. It's about 9.40 a.m. and the man you are seeing is preparing to board train 1079 along with his fellow passengers. Many of them are making their way to work in one of South Korea's busiest metros. As far as they're concerned, it's just an average morning's rush hour. However, this morning will be anything from normal. Ten minutes from now, the actions of this one man will lead to the death of around 190 people, and injure at least 150 others. His name is Kim Dae Han. As train 1079 pulls into Bangwoldang Station, Kim and his fellow passengers board onto the fifth car. As he situates himself among the commuters, he is carrying a duffel bag that contains two green cartons filled with a flammable liquid, believed to either be gasoline or paint thinner. To the rest of the passengers, he is just the nondescript older man in a tracksuit, and none spare him a second glance. However, in truth, Kim Dae Han is a mentally unstable individual with suicidal tendencies. Not much is known about his life. He's 56 years old, and prior to his retirement, he would work long hours as a taxi driver. So what has led this man to attempt to take his own life and the lives of those around him? In 2001, he had suffered a stroke that had left him partially paralyzed. It is not known what his relationship was like with his family prior to the stroke, but they would later ostracize him. By 2003, he had received numerous medical treatments However, he was dissatisfied with the results and had told the doctors that he was experiencing severe bouts of depression and sudden violence. As the year went on, Kim's depression and violent tendencies got worse, and he had decided that today, he would end his life. However, this wouldn't be the first time the Daegu Metro has seen tragedy. April 28th, 1995, 7.50am. Construction work is currently underway in an underground site of the second section of the Sagale subway line. As the workers go about their jobs, a group are currently drilling about 31 holes into a grout curtain in an attempt to strengthen the foundations. However, without realizing it, the workers have accidentally drilled through the city's gas lines. In a nearby sewer, the gas leak is slowly filling the area and after a few minutes, it leaks onto the site. At 7.52 a.m., an unknown fire causes a large explosion that tears through the site and creates a 50-meter pillar of fire. The private parking lot of the construction site collapses, 60 buildings and 152 cars are damaged, and 101 people tragically lose their lives. It's 9.50 a.m. Kim Dae Han and train 1079 are three minutes away from Jungano Station. Unbeknownst to those on board, there is another problem apart from Kim. The train is currently 10 years into its service. Because of this, the seats, flooring, and advertisement boards are not made of any fireproof materials, but composed of flammable fiberglass, carbonated vinyl, and polythylene. It's effectively a tinderbox on wheels. Over at Jungano Station, the rush hour crowd are patiently waiting. For all intents and purposes, it appears to be an ordinary morning. They have no idea what is about to happen, nor do they realize that the station's layout and protective measures will ultimately work against them. The platform for Jungano Station is on B3, this being the deepest level of the station. One floor up is the Machine and Equipment Control Center and a concourse. At the top level, known as B1, lies the mall. Many passengers on train 1079 are heading here as their place of work. Whilst this layout in itself would pose an issue during any evacuation attempt, Jungano Station has one more fatal flaw. Unlike the mall and control center, the main platform is not equipped with suitable fire preventive measures. The platform only has smoke detectors and fire alarms, whilst the other floors contain CO2 suppressors and sprinkler systems. Suffice to say, this platform is an accident waiting to happen. 9.53 AM 
train 1079 is now slowly coming to a stop at Jungano Station. As the commuters grab their belongings in preparation to depart, they notice a man playing with a lighter and holding a carton with a strange liquid. Almost immediately, one of the passengers realizes what's going on and attempts to restrain Kim. As the struggle plays out, the other commuters don't see the lighter and carton fall to the floor. As this happens, the flammable liquid ignites and the carriage is engulfed in flames. As the fire rapidly spreads, the passengers of the fifth car quickly evacuate the platform. Among them is Kim Dai Han, who has suffered minor burns. As the commuters rush for the exit, one of them pulls the fire alarm, sending a signal to the control center, but for some reason, it is ignored by the officials. As the smoke engulfs the platform, the fire doors on B1 and B2 are triggered, sealing the survivors off from other potential exit points. Two minutes later, all six coaches of train 1079 are on fire. Any passengers who didn't escape are currently suffocating from the toxic smoke. These precious minutes will be the only time the commuters can escape as safely as possible. Due to the fire doors being shut, it has started to concentrate the heat and the smoke emitting from the train, but there is also another problem. Over at Daegu Station, commuters are currently boarding train 1080 as it departs for its next destination. The driver, Choi Sang Yul, hasn't been informed by the officials about the fire and carries about 80 passengers to the inferno. Up at the surface, passers-by are shocked to see bellowing smoke emitting from the subway. They spot a crowd running from the entrance in a blind panic. The arsonist, Kim Dai Han, is among the crowd and sneaks away. Emergency response quickly arrives on the scene to help those who are injured. The commuters are traumatized, but they will survive. 9.57 AM Train 1080 has stopped a few hundred yards away in the tunnel leading to Jungano Station. For some reason, the officials believe it's only a small incident as they look through the closed-circuit cameras. The driver is advised to proceed to the platform with caution. As train 1080 comes to a stop alongside train 1079, it's currently 1.3 meters away. The doors briefly open before the driver quickly shuts them in an attempt to seal out the toxic smoke. The passengers, in a blind panic, begin to call and text message their loved ones. Choi Sang Yul makes an announcement advising passengers to remain seated while he attempts to recontact his superiors. As he does this, the power to train 1079 and 1080 are shut down by the fire detection systems, preventing it from leaving the station. The driver decides to wait for a resupply of power and refuses to let the passengers evacuate. A few minutes later, he is contacted by his superiors and is advised to quickly leave and head up to the surface. Choi leaves his compartment and evacuates the platform, taking the master key with him. Because of this, he has shut down the onboard batteries which powered the train's doors. The passengers are now sealed inside. Choi Sang Yul flees the station, leaving his passengers to die. Once he manages to get out of the station, he contacts his officials and leaves the master key at Ansin Train Depot in an attempt to cover up his negligence. In these last minutes, many of the passengers message their families goodbye. Some even attempt to smash the windows in their last desperate attempt. The temperature in the station is now reaching around 1000 degrees Celsius, or 1857 degrees Fahrenheit. On B2, there are still commuters who are trying to escape, however the smoke has become too thick. They are effectively blind. As they run to the fire door in a panic, they start banging and screaming to be let out, but the fire door remains shut. 1.30 p.m. After three intense hours, the fire has finally been extinguished. However, the emergency response has to wait another two hours for the toxic smoke to subside enough for them to commence recovering the bodies. When the firefighters descend into the subway, they find those who try to escape on the final stairway leading up to the surface. The commuters were about 10 meters away from the entrance. As they reached the B2 concourse, they noticed that the fire had spread, burning down the ticket stands and destroying part of the ceiling. 
As they make their way through the debris, they spot the tragic sight of the commuters piled against the fire door in their final attempt to escape. When they finally make it to the platform, they see that both train 1079 and train 1080 are completely destroyed. Sadly, due to the destructive nature of the fire, many of the passengers on board can't be visually identified. Some time later, Kim Dai Han is spotted at the hospital receiving treatment for his burns. When questioned by the authorities as to why he started the fire, he replied that he had been considering suicide for some time, but he didn't want to die alone. He was quickly arrested and eventually sentenced to life in prison on August 5th, 2003. However, he died one year later from health complications. Choi Sang Yul, operator of train 1080, had disappeared for 11 hours after the fire. When he was apprehended, him and Choi Yong Hwan, operator of train 1079, were sentenced to prison for five and four years respectively for criminal negligence. The Daegu fire was the largest act of mass murder committed by a single individual that the country had ever seen. In the end, 192 people had lost their lives to the blaze and the victims' families, to this day, still feel as if they never got justice. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. I've been Mr. Blank, and you've been watching Beyond the Dark.